Welcome to Living Mosaic, a project of the Spark of Humanity Network. My name is Martha Holden, and I am a member of the Spark of Humanity Network. The Spark of Humanity Network developed from late 2016 to affirm our conviction that there is a spark of humanity in everyone. And that as we get in touch with our own spark, which often many of us are not so in touch with, we get in touch with our own spark and get comfortable with it and sort of let our awareness and our sparks um, become reacquainted because they were very familiar with each other until our heads started getting active, right? Um, and then when through our spark we connect with and affirm the spark in another, that that strengthens their spark. And it seems that the strengthened spark acts to erode the defenses which we all have, clarify the bafflement which we all have to some extent, and release the distortions which we all have. Maybe you don't, but I know I do and everybody I talk to about this does. So in that process, we become agents of transformation because the person whose spark is strengthened and whose defenses are becoming eroded and whose bafflement is becoming clarified and whose distortions are being released is being changed. They're being transformed. They're susceptible to transformation. And subtly, the transformation is happening. The challenge for some of us who like to think we're just fine just the way we are is that by connecting with and affirming somebody else's spark, our spark is strengthened too, which means that our defenses are becoming eroded, our bathroom is becoming clarified, our distortions are being released. So that's, for some people, the downside because they don't want to be transformed. They want to stay just the way they are. Well, essentially, if we want to be part of the solution, to the heartbreak, the gut-wrenching, the horror. I don't need to name them all. You've probably got your own list that's your go-to when you're thinking about or trying not to think about the tragedy which is unfolding on this planet. So to, if we want to be part of the solution to that, we need to be willing to be transformed. For some of us, you know, not happy news, but because for some of us, we, we love the planet. We love our fellow creatures, all of them. And we want to be part of the solution. Because in the premise of the Living Mosaic series, is that there is a solution. There is a solution. It's not one that we can graph or chart, but there is a solution and it may be <clears throat> envisioned or conceived as a living mosaic, hence the name. A living mosaic, a living, breathing, dynamic mosaic of which we are each, each, each a unique and essential bit. And we each have our role within the mosaic. And the mosaic being alive wants to stay alive. So it, it attracts us when we are letting go through 
the spark and vision practice, if we choose to use that or some other way, when we are into our willingness to be transformed, our willingness to be part of the solution, our desire, and there's somewhere there between desire and willingness to be part of the solution that often many of us get a sort of a, uh, well, uh, not that, I mean, yes, but uh, that's a bit, uh, that's a little dire. I'm not sure I want to, oh, can I, you know, we all, I think, at some point bump into that point in the process. Anyway, the life of the mosaic, its, it's nature is, is to draw us in toward our true, essential, unique place, our role within the mosaic. So to become part of the solution is not as much figuring it out. In fact, it's not at all figuring it out from my experience. It's about letting go of our old ideas, our concepts of how things have to be, our attachment to what we need and how it needs to be for us, letting go of all that, and becoming willing to be transformed, to become sensitive to that subtle but present. And I can't say irresistible, but persistent sort of inhale of the mosaic, wanting to draw us in toward where we are needed to be. We uniquely, nobody else can be our place in the mosaic. And we can't be anybody else's either, although often we think we know the way they should be and want to tell them all about it. But the fact is, that's not our job. Our job in this regard is to support them and encourage them and know that there is a place in the mosaic for them. For them. They may need to be let, let go of some stuff. They may need to change the way they think, as do we so often. But there is a place for them, and we can encourage them and support them in that. We can't make it happen for them. And even if we are dead sure that that is your place in the mosaic, head for it with all your gusto, kid. Go for it. No. Actually, we can't be sure that that's their place in the mosaic. All we can do is support them to be open, to be willing, to let go of things that get in the way, and pay attention to us, our very own personal journey, our, our being attracted into, inhaled into, drawn into our place in the mosaic. So that's it in a nutshell. Today we're talking about, I, yeah, we're talking about, I'm talking about, we're talking about invitation. The idea that, the insight that everything that comes to us in our life is an invitation to press more deeply, more intentionally, more faithfully into our be being drawn toward our role in the mosaic. It's an invitation to let go of our idea about how it was and how it was like two minutes ago. And that's a lot of work that's not easy. I can say it. But, you know, I can't make it any easier for you. It's hard enough for me. <laughs> but I can let you know that it's possible and that it's worth it to see that that heartbreak as an invitation to, you know, not today, not to deny it, but an invitation to begin to open up our broken hearts 
and let ourselves be drawn. Pay attention. We'll be talking about that in a few weeks. Paying attention, opening up, becoming more alert to that subtle um, inhale for the mosaic. Heartbreak. The things that make us sick to our stomach. We, I'm not going to look at that TV show. I'm not going to look at that picture on the front of the paper. I don't want to hear that story from those people. What, that just is, it's gut wrenching and distressing to the point of nausea, total repulsion. That too is an invitation to shift our focus from, from how horrible it is, how it is that we can't do anything about it, how terrible it is that they're not doing something about it, how they're not paying any attention to the fact that we know that this is what should happen, and trying to get everybody else around us to get to agree with us that this is what they, they should be doing. You know, let go of that. It's an invitation for us to say, okay, what I can do about this, there's something that I uniquely can do about this. There's a place of empowerment when we're feeling, you know, when we want to hide under the covers or deny or despair or, you know, or get everybody around us riled up just like we're riled up so we can feel very comfortable because we're in a pack of people who are all hysterical about this. But there's something uniquely that we're fit for, each one of us. And to move toward that, to be willing to let go of the drama and the self-pity and the resentment and the judgment, all that stuff that we need to let go of. And just allow ourselves to become tuned into, okay, how do I, how do I use this pain, this agony, this heartbreak, this nausea to, to support me to, to drive me, actually is the way I feel it often, press, drive me towards becoming, closer to becoming my part of the mosaic, finding my, living into my role in the mosaic. Now, see, because the mosaic is alive. And if you think about that, besides it wanting to be alive and therefore you know, sort of attracting us subtly, but attracting us toward where it needs us to be, it's alive so when we're in our part of the mosaic, we also are called to be alive. We don't get to say, ah, I've found my place in the mosaic. I am touched tucked into my role in the mosaic. This is the way it is for the rest of my life. I have triumphed. I am so grateful. I am a part of the solution, and I will always be part of the solution because I'm going to stay just the way I am. No. So sad. So very, very sad. And true that the mosaic is alive so that as we are taking our place, finding our place within the mosaic, that we also need to continue to be alive which means we're paying attention to the mosaic, to what's going on. We're going to be talking about attention in a f several weeks, beginning of December, if not before. But that paying attention to our circumstances, how we are, how we're feeling, deep, 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 you know, down there. Within each one of us, I think there is a, what I, we can think of, well, there's our spark of humanity. That's one way to say it. That also is sort of like a tuning fork. And when that tuning fork is struck, it, it hums and it's 
got the pitch and we know it's true and we are aligned and there we are, we're true. Like a plumb line is true. We can't make that up. There are lots of people who delude themselves about, you know, that they're there or they're almost there or if they make more money or if they win an election or whatever, if they drop this bomb in the right place, that, you know, they're right, right where they're tuning for. You know, we, it doesn't work because the only thing that really works is the truth. And that's the spark of humanity or the tuning fork or whatever we whatever we want to call it, however you want to envision it. This is all a metaphor, right? We're all a metaphor here. So the so to pay attention to that within ourselves. So we're aware when we're drifting off a little bit, or when when we're drifting off more than a little bit, when we're you know way out of line. Um, because I've always done it this way. My parents did it this way. I'm supposed to be happy, and it doesn't make me happy not to be here. You know, all the stuff that we do, letting go of all that. So as we approach, if we ever find our true place within the mosaic, our true role within the mosaic, we need to be alert that it's growing, it's breathing, we need to be growing and breathing to develop that sensitivity so we know when we're truer, when we're more in our role in the mosaic, as our role shifts. So it's, a, so it's supposed to be an invitation, right? But I, as so often happens, I go off into my nut bag. And the... <clears throat> The terror, the fear that we can feel, as well as the heartbreak and the gut-wrenching nausea, the, the terror that we can feel. I don't need to talk about what about, but just... And it can paralyze us. And... We can remember, however, that that sensation of terror, because what we're being terrified by is <coughs> some function, right, of our, of how we're receiving something, and we can choose to. Yes, that terrifies me. And what can I do about it? It's all this, you know. I don't like that. What can I do about it? Not, what is the saying? It is better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. So it's that idea. There's always something we can do about it, about what's underlying that, that feeling. There's always a way to get closer to being part of the solution. You know, to just, I'm just going to do something about my feeling. I'll go to the bar. I'll buy another car. I'll get a new girlfriend. I'll, you know, whatever. Um, you know, that's not, that isn't going to work for long. So it's the, how do I, I can, Mosaic, help me, you know, I want to move into the place of agency, as people say, to how I become part of the solution here. It's always an invitation to press more deeply into the solution. There's nothing static in this system. It's a dance. We're each a unique information event within the cosmic, ever-evolving, multi-dimensional dance of all being. So it's all, it's all moving. So, but our intention, our will, <clears throat> our willingness are always something that we can have access to that's there. And it's not, so it's not just the big horrible things that are invitations. The itch, the twitch, whatever, and trust me, I've got some itches right now, but I'm 
going to press into the solution and not scratch my nose and my armpit. Um, just because I want practice, I know I need practice, to in shifting the focus from the itch or the heartbreak or the terror. Just practice. It's a, it's, it's just like tennis or golf or snowboarding. It's just practice. And we'll be talking about practice maybe next time. I can't remember. But it's coming up. It's coming up about how we um, explore what a good practice for us is, where we can flip the switch from... Because the whole economy is built on our being terrified and heartbroken and, you know, sick to our stomachs. It's particularly the terror. It's built on... The economy is built on the terror. So to develop a pra somewhere we can go, somewhere that becomes familiar to us, so that we can just shift the dial from terror, take the invitation, accept the invitation, receive the invitation, and choose to, oh, I don't want to stay in terror. I don't need to stay in terror. I can choose to become part of the solution. I can choose to become more deeply part of the solution. I can choose to live into my role in the solution and change the dial, turn the dial, so that I'm in the practice, whatever it is. So we'll talk about that, as I said. But the, but the developing of a habit, or just, and it takes practice. It, take, it takes practice. Yep, just like golf and tennis and snowboarding and the flute and the clarinet. It just, it takes practice. And, you know, so that's one of the reasons we have a community here, Living Mosaic, is to support each other in doing our practice. Not the, it's not the same practice. I mean, for some people it may, but just, you know, doing the spark of humanity practice can be enough for some people. It's, it's not mine, I mean, although I try to remember it, but, you know, it's... It's an invitation. Just every time, whenever you find yourself reacting, wanting to react to a situation, you can just begin practicing. I don't like this situation. I, so it makes me uncomfortable. It terrifies me. It makes me sick. It breaks my heart. It's, you know, it's, my nose is itching. Oh, it's an invitation. It's an invitation for me to get closer to pay more attention to my being drawn into my role in the living mosaic, being drawn into the solution. Okay, so I can... I mean, and just beginning to develop that thought shift, the neural pathways. The neural pathways are like ruts, or hopefully, but they're, you know, it's like sand. and having a spoon and you draw the spoon across the sand and you make a little groove and you the wind blows and the sand fills the groove and you do it again and you do it again and you're doing it again and you do it again and you know there's water underneath there there's living water underneath all that but the so it begins to attract us and we begin to learn it but it's you know so you're wandering around you oh you fall into that groove that you've been working on. Oh, good. I don't have to stay terrified. I don't need to stay heartbroken. I don't need to stay sick to my stomach. So just start thinking about that because we're, we're moving in that direction. And thank you for joining me. And thank you as always to Orca Media, which is generously provides this opportunity. And thank you for all the goodness in the world and around us that supports us in becoming who we are needed to be to be part of the solution. Thank you. Have a good week. Take care.